Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, September 8th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect mostly cloudy skies with a high of 91 and a slight chance of rain in San Antonio today. Join the Express News editorial board this morning as they interview Mayor Ron Nirenberg and City Council members Rebecca Viagran and Adrian Rocha Garcia to discuss the Workforce Development Plan, which will be on the ballot this November. You can find a link to the editorial board meeting in this episode's description. Leading up to the recommendations for president, the Express News editorial board is breaking down the five key campaign issues with a San Antonio filter. You can find a link to that breakdown in this episode's description as well. And now, let's move on to the top stories for the day. After months of planning hampered by shifting risk assessments and zigzagging state rules, today we'll see the first return of students to classrooms for many public schools in San Antonio. With the community spread of the coronavirus on decline but still a threat, classes will start on a small scale for individual campuses in several local school districts, including the three largest. All are requiring face coverings and social distancing. On Monday, local coalition that includes parents, teachers, and health professionals warned that the move is premature and risky. Read more about the San Antonio Coalition on School Reopening Concerns at the link in this episode's description. As the coronavirus burned through San Antonio this summer, Nora Rangel's family confronted a series of agonizing choices while she deteriorated at Southwest General Hospital. Many families were facing the same questions, making complex decisions about medical care of loved ones from a distance. As infection rates soared, hospitals and other healthcare facilities adopted strict visitation policies that largely kept families from patients' bedsides. The physical separation upended some of the most delicate conversations in medicine, those between hospitals and families about the end of life. The latest story from reporter Lauren Karuba and photojournalist Lisa Krantz explores the way hospital staff are attempting to replace face-to-face conversations and extended time at a patient's side. A new cohort of students has arrived at the SAC First Responders Academy, attending one of several trade or career-oriented programs at four of the five Alamo colleges that offer hands-on face-to-face training, with masks, gloves, temperature checks, and social distancing. You can't learn how to make an arrest or operate a ladder truck online. For a closer look at how the school and its students are adapting to -to face-to-face learning, read the latest from Andres Picon. Columnist Elena Yala writes, quote, For more than 300 years, religious teachers have devoted themselves in this very Catholic of cities to teach the difference between right and wrong. They've failed. Read more about the arguments Sister Martha Ann Kirk and the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word used to convince a group of religious nuns to make a stop in San Antonio in October to help the residents do better, at least in time for the November elections. They take seriously Pope Francis' advice that a good Catholic meddles in politics. To keep our readers up to date on the path of COVID-19, the Express News has built a dashboard of interactive graphics showing the spread of the virus in the San Antonio area, in Texas as a whole, and across the United States. We've also created an interactive map of San Antonio for COVID-19 testing sites that don't require a doctor's referral. You can find a link to the dashboard and the interactive map in this episode's description. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside your Express News subscription. Despite an estimated $4.58 billion budget shortfall because of a pandemic-induced recession hitting Texas, even before lawmakers meet in January to decide future spending, the building, maintenance, and planning of highways might be virtually untouched. For the first time in its 43-year history, the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium will be held virtually. A man was charged with murder after he allegedly ran over his ex-wife with a pickup truck early Saturday, according to the authorities. At least one person was injured after a possible shooting and collision Monday afternoon on the east side. 
The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the suspected HEB shoplifter who was shot and killed after allegedly stabbing a San Antonio police officer in the face last week. With no new federal funds in sight, the city of San Antonio may have to dip into its own pockets to continue fighting the novel coronavirus in the new year. The pandemic has ushered in a new group of inexperienced boaters after weeks of being cooped up at home. Accidents on Texas' waterways have soared 55% and boating injuries have spiked 68% compared to this time last year. Local curator Maria M. Williams has created The Art of Four, an initiative that will feature four new artists each year to provide more exposure for the work of African-American artists, filmmakers, and writers in San Antonio. The San Antonio manufacturing company Zenex recently filed for a license to redevelop a nearly 22,000-square-foot building near San Antonio International Airport. Sales of the company's germ-zapping robots have skyrocketed 600%, according to its CEO. Former IDEA leader Tom Torkelson wants 150 charter students in San Antonio by 2030. It just does not make sense to impede a potential voter's attempts to access the ballot box when our greatest voting affliction is apathy during most elections, writes the Express News editorial board. On a Friday night in just about any small town in Texas, if it's not directly football-related, it's probably at least football-adjacent. Even now, Mike Finger writes. This week in history, 19 years ago, on the morning of September 11, 2001, two planes crashed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. It was later determined to be an act of terrorism. Quote, on September 11, 2001, America's sense of itself was forever changed as a series of audacious terrorist attacks unfolded on live national television. Terrorism against our nation will not stand, President Bush told a stunned national TV audience about noon, a story by John McCormick reported. Crisia Ramirez Franklin is a vocal advocate for children in foster care, a system she knows all too well. She was two years old when she was first placed in temporary foster care because of her mother's substance abuse. Her father was in and out of their lives. As her family grew, she was repeatedly separated from her six siblings who were scattered at different homes. By the time she was 14, she had lived in more than 50 foster homes in Texas, Illinois, and Minnesota. For the past 13 years, Franklin has spoken about her years in foster care, a moving story of sacrifice and resiliency at state and national forums. You can find her story at the link in this episode's description. Baby back ribs and spare ribs are the cuts that are generally considered whenever you tell someone that you're having ribs for dinner. We explain the difference and show you how to make them in this week's edition of Chuck's Food Shack. The San Antonio-based Pizza Patron punches beyond its pizza chain competitors. Read our 52 weeks of pizza review at the link in this episode's description. The Witty Museum shows kids how to make modeling clay using flowers for color in a fun DIY project you can find at the link in this episode's description. In high school sports, Bernie has taken over the top spot in our sub-5-8 football rankings, and Deannis Jolie Frosch is the EN Player of the Week in Volleyball. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing for Tuesday, September 8th. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.